Welcome! In this tutorial, we're going to set up a custom template in Ableton Live designed to make your workflow faster, cleaner, and more professional. With this template, you'll have organized groups, streamlined side chaining, optimized headroom, and quick access to all the tools that you need. Once set up, this template will be the backbone of your production process, saving you time and giving you a solid foundation for every project. Let's start by creating groups in Ableton Live. Organizing your sounds into groups keeps everything clean and manageable so you can quickly find what you need. I typically set up each group with two audio tracks and two MIDI tracks as placeholders, giving you a quick way to add samples or VST instruments as you start working. Select your two audio tracks and two MIDI tracks and group them. Now I'm going to duplicate them to give us seven in total. I'll name each of them kick slash snare, percussion, sub, bass, instruments, sound effects, and vocals. This keeps everything organized by type. Let's assign group colors. I'll pick a unique color for each group. This helps everything stay visually clear while working. Next, we'll do gain staging. I set each group to specific levels to keep things balanced from the start and allow plenty of room for adjustments during the mix down. I set the kick and snare to negative 6.5 decibels, percussion to negative nine, sub to negative 10, bass to negative eight, instruments to negative eight, sound effects to negative nine, and vocals to negative eight. These settings help prevent clipping and give you a clear organized foundation to work from. They're just a starting point, so feel free to adjust them whenever you need. For the vocals group, we'll use only audio tracks since vocals are generally audio files. Also, in the kick and snare group, you can choose to have either a MIDI track for creating beats or an audio track if you're working with stems while vocal recording. Now let's set up a sidechain send for each of these groups. Insert a return track and name it sidechain. We'll come back to this in just a minute. For now, add a drum rack to your kick and snare channel and add a placeholder sample for each. Group this drum rack and open the chain section. Insert a new chain and name it trigger or side chain. Add an external instrument to it. We currently have nowhere to route this MIDI, so we'll have to go back to our side chain return and add volume shaper. Add three points by left clicking and adjust their speed with a right click to create whatever kind of curve you would like for your side chaining. We're also going to swap the MIDI trigger to one shot and the LFO to Hertz. Finally, we will group this shaper box and map the speed to a macro so we can control how our sidechain behaves. Click on the M to map a parameter inside of shaper box and then select speed. Now you'll see that it's popped up. Select map under a macro to hook them together. I find between 0.22 and 0.38 is suitable for most music. Now when you adjust the knob, it will adjust it inside of the plugin. Head back into your kick and snare drum rack and hook up the MIDI. I'll play some MIDI notes to see if it triggers the way that we intend. As you can see, the volume dips whenever the kick and snare happens. As for using stock Ableton plugins, add a compressor in the shaper box's place and open up the advanced options and select sidechain from your drum rack. Then adjust the threshold to have a similar effect. Now all that's left is to save your template as a default set which will load every time that live is launched or you make a new live set. And that's it. In the next video, we're going to dive into send and return channels. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.